Today we're going to be cooking sausages, cold cannon mash and veggies with homemade gravy. So let's get started. First of all, we have our cabbage. We have our veggies, green beans and water. potatoes. Now it's good to soak them in water, this just helps to preserve them after the point of peeling which makes them stay fresher for longer. Cheese, spring onions, milk, butter, chicken stock, Sausages, mustard powder, corn flour, olive oil, salt and pepper, fennel seeds, tarragon, red and white onions sliced. So we're going to need a few pieces of equipment today, in amongst others. So we're going to need a masher in order to mash the potato in a bowl, in order to decant the potatoes once they're cooked into a bowl in order to mash. We want a spatula, one as a minimum, and we want some tongs, one as a minimum. We also have a wire basket and a trivet, and that will just hold the potatoes above the sausages whilst they cook in order to do the mash at the same time. And a steamer basket. Now the steamer basket I can add into the second crock pot. I can then do the veggies as a side at the same time as I can do the main. If you wish to, you can stop the main. You can depressurize it. You can place this into the main after taking the potatoes out and you can repressurize it for two minutes and that will cook your vegetables in the same pot after the cooking of the potatoes. It's entirely up to you which way you prefer. I tend to find this a slightly more convenient method because you can do them side by side, both at the same time. So first of all, I'm gonna place my vegetable steamer basket directly into the second crock pot. If you are choosing to do the veggies as a side, you'll want to add a cup of water and then the vegetables directly into the steamer. Now we can place the lid on, making sure it's set to lock, and leave that to one side for the moment. So once we have our vegetables all ready, we can begin to saute, and that means we want to press the brown saute and start. At this point we want to add the oil, so we're just going to add the olive oil. Now that the cooker is up to temperature we can add the sausages. Now we want to do this in two batches ideally so that we don't overcrowd the pot. And as I've got 10 sausages here my suggestion would be five at a time. And what we're hoping to do is just brown the sausages and as we see we're just keeping all of the juices in the sausages. So as you can see these sausages have got a fantastic texture, a fantastic colouring to them and that's what we're hoping to achieve by frying first. So this is our first batch of sausages. We just want to put these onto a plate. and begin our next batch. So now the sausages have come up to a nice golden crispy texture and a nice appearance. Now 
And for the next part, we want to add the onions. This is where we're going to want our spatula to give it a good stir. We also want to add our salt and pepper. Now, with onions, they tend to cook very quickly and they tend to burn if they're quite fine. What we can do just to slow the process down is just to add a dribble of water. And that will allow the onions to caramelise without them burning. All we're looking to do is caramelise the onions, which only takes a couple of minutes. Now that the onions are done, we can switch off saute mode and begin the next step. Just want to add the sausages back into the pan. This is the part where we can add the potatoes. So meanwhile, I'm just going to drain the potatoes. And there are two parts to this. So we have our trivet, which just holds the potatoes above the sausages and our wire mesh basket. We can add our potatoes straight in. And checking to make sure our lid is set to sealed. We can place the lid on. And we want manual mode. So meanwhile, we want to do the veggies. Now the veggies I approximate will take about 12 to 13 minutes. The other thing we can do is using a second steamer basket, or if you wish to, adding the cabbage directly on top of the existing vegetables and separating it afterwards. It means you can do all of the veggies in one stage. So now the countdown timer is on seven minutes. We can begin the veggies for approximately two minutes. Now it depends on your preference, whether you like more bite, you can do it for a minute, or whether you like it kind of medium soft-ish, you can do it for two minutes. Do you want to select manual? Two minutes. So the cooking process has completed on the sausages. All we need to do now is release the pressure. If you wish to, you can always add a towel over the top. We can now switch this off and remove the lid. Now it's worth just checking to make sure the potatoes are cooked. When they slide off the fork, you'll know they're done. Now in order to lift this out, as this is going to be hot, we can either use our heat proof mitts or a tea towel, whichever you prefer. So the time has just begun on our vegetables. We're halfway through with the mash and the sausages are ready to place onto a plate. So our veggies are done, we can now switch off and depressurize. If you wish to, you can use the steam funnel. So our veggies are ready to open and using our mitt. We can add our cabbage. We now want to add our butter. Now with the milk, you can add as much or as little as you like, depending on the consistency you're trying to achieve. So I'm going to start with half of this. And our mash is ready for us to add our spring onion slices.
We can now sprinkle with cheese. Now it's time to make our gravy. So for this we want to select brown and saute. Add our fennel seeds. Our tarragon. Our chicken stock. Our mustard powder. And we want to wait for this to come to the boil. Meanwhile, we can serve our veggies. So now this has come to the boil, we can add our corn flour for thickener and give it a good stir. We can also add our remaining water. So now this has bubbled for a minute or so, we can switch this off. Now ideally we want to use a hand blender, as this will puree the gravy and make sure there's no bits and no lumps. Now if you're happy with the consistency of your gravy, like so, it's ready to pour. If you want to thin it out, you can use the water from the vegetables directly into the gravy. As this is full of nutrients. So it's time for the taste test. The mash is sensational. It's got a perfect amount of little crispy bits, i.e. the spring onions, the herbs are amazing, the gravy with a hint of fennel. The cabbage just gives it a texture that's unbelievable. The flavour of the sausage and the texture is absolutely amazing. With the herby gravy as well, it's a perfect complement. Peas are perfectly done. And the beans have got a perfect amount of flavour with just enough bite. Altogether, if you'd really want to pull out all of the stops for a meal, I'd say this is one of those meals going to absolutely level up your cooking game and anyone who eats this meal is going to be thoroughly enjoying it. Subtle touches, things like the herbs, things like the cold cannon mash, adding the cabbage into the mash with the spring onions are all unexpected little twists and surprises which make the dish absolutely wonderful. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. See you in the next one.